Hey everyone, I'm Michael and today I want to show you how you can use untyped data or kind of untyped data with GraphQL and Hot Chocolate. So GraphQL is strongly typed and that's one of the main features. But sometimes we want to maybe have a JSON-like structure to describe metadata or additional information. This is where the any type or the JSON types in GraphQL come in. These are actually scalars that you don't find in the spec, but in many implementations. By the way, we are running workshops at multiple conferences throughout the year. So if you want to spend two days with Martin and me diving deep into GraphQL concepts, learning all about hot chocolate and how to write awesome UI applications on top of GraphQL, join us. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. I have prepared here the typical books and authors example that I used in many examples. So we have here the book and the author entity. And what we want to do is introduce a list of metadata to our books type, typically a key value pair here where the value could be anything. But in this case, I don't want to change my book type here. So I'm going to introduce an object type extension. And that type extension is here represented by a static class. So I can then add here reservers that are actually merged into my logical GraphQL type. And that is done by using the extend object type attribute here, where I refer to this type I want to extend. By the way, if you're on .NET 6, there's a non-generic attribute for that. But also with .NET 6, it's possible to use the generic attributes if you opt into the newer language version. With that, let's add a new resolver here. And in this case, this resolver will return a list. And then we're going to introduce a new class metadata. And let's figure out what metadata is in a second. And let's first finish the resolver off. So we're going to say get metadata here. And then we just return null here. Next, we introduce a record. And that record is just called metadata, has a key as a property and a JSON element. That is actually our any type, if you will. Awesome. Let me fix the casing here. And now we can return something here. So in order to provide a value here, we can just provide the JSON document, then say pass. And this value could be, for instance, just an integer. That would be a valid value. And we could return here the root element. And then we are good to go. Actually, this is wrong. Let's run that. OK, there's one more error because I forgot the static here. The browser is up. Let's add GraphQL to the route. And then we could, should get banana cake pop here. Let's create a new document. And then we can explore first the API. So when I go in here to look at my book, I can see here's the metadata, it's a list. And if I dive in here, we can see there is a JSON type. And that is our new any type, if you will. So because we used to have an any type for a long time. I will explain in a bit why this one is actually nicer to use. So we now can query that thing to ask for a book here for the metadata. And then maybe we just want a value and I can query for that. And you can see that is an int here, which is standard thing, not very exciting, but you can see it's not a string version of the int. It's a proper int. So let's add more metadata, here. add a new row here. Maybe we want to have a proper object. And by the way, we could use the new thing here in .NET, which is with the triple quotes. Or actually, you could have even have more quotes, depending on what you want to do. And then we don't have to unescape or escape, actually, in our JSON string here, anything. So I can just use now a property here and call that, for instance, foo. Awesome. So that has rebuilt. We go back to our banana cake pop view here and then query for the next thing. And what you can see here is that the value now is a proper JSON object could be a very deep structure could even be a list so this is whatever we put in on the json side okay so this is kind of nice to use the good thing here is this is a system text json that you can use here we accept a json element so that's very flexible on where you can get that but sometimes we don't want to use this json element even we just want to have a string here 
So in this case, we could then use the GraphQL type attribute and tell our system that this is actually the JSON type. And in this case, I don't even have to pass this string here. We will very efficiently, more efficiently than this pass, pass that as a JSON structure. And then the code already looks a lot cleaner here. So we go back to banana cake pop, rerun this thing, and it actually fails. It's a string now. And this is because we didn't annotate the type here or the property. We did annotate actually the parameter of the record. There is actually, if you want to get it on the property, the output side of this type, then you have to add this property keyword here. Then we go back here, rerun it, and then it's proper JSON. Okay, that's awesome. Our code looks very nice to use. And on the output side, we just can return here the string. The same goes, by the way, for the input side. So if I wanted to add something here, and let's quickly add a mutation. So I created here a mutation type, and then I have here a mutation called add book. I can pass in the title, the author, and also some metadata. In this case, metadata is just my JSON element. And then we just, in this case, construct from it the actual book type. So typically your mutation looks much more complex. There are more things in there like database layer or a repository where you actually save it. In my case, we are more about having this JSON type here as an input than having a proper mutation here. Okay, so I'm creating here my book type, passing in the title and constructing the author. And in this case, we actually have our resolver detached from the actual type here. So let me quickly go back here and let's merge that actually into our book type, right? Let's introduce here a new list of metadata, metadata, get rid of this guy here. And then back at our mutation, we can now construct the metadata list here from our JSON element. So I'm doing here a new metadata. In this case, I'm doing it to string here. So I get it typed just for demo purposes. And then I'm doing it to string here because we are using a to string in our metadata type. Okay, so this should run already. Let's refresh that. And then we write a mutation in here. So this is our query. Okay, let me add the mutation here, add book and look here. So we have here the basic author data and here I have the metadata, which is an object. And this can be any GraphQL object structure here. It could also be just an int. And then we are rereading it here. So it cannot be invalid GraphQL. This would not work, right? Uh, so it has to be valid type GraphQL and that can be translated into valid JSON. So we can run that and you can see it's coming out here as the same. So when we change something in here, introduce a new field, for instance, a, which is one, run that, then we also get that here. So this is how we can introduce untyped data structures, typically used for metadata and stuff like that, to your GraphQL API. So there's one more thing, because we had this any type and the thing with any was, let's just introduce it. And let's put it to the actual query here. So with any, the thing was, it was represented essentially as a dictionary of string and object. And uh, lists were a list of object and you could put them and you could construct with it a tree. But it's kind of not nice to use because lots of data have maybe JSON in the database and things like that. So you always had to deserialize into this object structure here to get a valid any type. You could also have implemented something like our JSON type by using type converters that actually convert it into that structure. But then you have a lot more allocation than you need. So the JSON type is now hitting exactly that sweet spot where you have this ease of use and then can do all the things that you could do with any type. So the thing is, if you wanna update your schema and we have this new type, this will break all your clients, right? And that is where you actually can alias this thing and then swap out the implementation underneath. So let's say we want to make this JSON type that we have now the any type, then we would go here to the program CS and we would register it. So we now registered by hand the JSON type here, but we could alias it. And you can do that with any scalar, right? You can just give it a new name. In this case, we call it any. And then we say that the binding behavior is implicit. And that means this JSON scalar binds automatically to all the JSON element things. 
So if I have here mutation, this guy here, automatically the JSON type will bind to that as any. If we made that explicit, then you would have to use the GraphQL type attribute or in the fluent world, you would need to use the type descriptor to mark this as an any type. But now this will be the default for anything that JSON type understands. Okay, let's try it out. Our server's already rebuilt. We go back to our schema, we refresh here, we go to our schema reference, then we dive into book here, and you can see there's metadata, and metadata is now any. Same goes for our mutation, where we have metadata now as any here. So this is how you alias types. Awesome, I showed you how you can use a new JSON type to have structured untyped data in your GraphQL schema. I also showed you how there's a migration pass by aliasing this JSON type and then getting rid of the current any type implementation you have. This actually was a big ask from the community to simplify how any works. But we didn't want to break your current implementation. And especially with skaters, this can be a huge thing for a lot of people that are using Hot Chocolate to swap out the implementation. Now you can have it side by side. Either you use it as JSON type and have still the old any type in your schema and slowly migrate towards JSON type, or you can alias the JSON type as any type and then swap out your implementation. So either way, you are better off now. <laughs> So what do you think about the JSON type? Sound off in the comments. If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. And with this, I'm out.